Good morning, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, I know I haven't been on here in over a couple of weeks, but uh, it's been a nice couple of weeks. And so uh, we went to Kentucky and and uh, attended my daughter's wedding and and saw a bunch of family hadn't seen in a while. And the uh, house we were staying at, there were over 30 people staying there for a few days. So. Um, but it was good to see everybody. And then we headed back. I'm obviously, as you can tell, I'm back on the ranch in Wyoming. Um, going to be here for four or five days and then headed on out to Idaho. Jesse had a, another crew coming in. And so, and I had a couple of things that I needed to do here that I was going to put off. Uh, but since he was going to be occupied up in the mountains, for a few extra days, I decided to come back here and take care of a couple of things. And, and, uh, so that's, that's what we're doing now. Um, just cut, touch on a couple of things. I, there would just seem to be a lot of confusion about the whole t-shirt deal. Uh, we had announced on both platforms and for a while we had it on the site that the t-shirts at that point were a pre-sale and they were not going to be printed and shipped out um, until the 1st of October. And a lot of folks didn't understand that. So I got a lot of emails, people wanting to know where the shirt was and, and, uh, but uh, that's all done now. The guy assures me everything has been printed and shipped out at this point and we have inventory. So if you order anything from this point on, uh, it should be in stock and they should send it right out. Uh, the same with the Zippos and, uh, so I'm, I don't know how to do this stuff. And so I'm figuring it out and there's mistakes and I'll take the blame for it. And so if you got delayed on your, on your stuff, uh, I apologize for it. Um, and if we can't get it figured out to where it runs smoothly, we'll just stop doing it. It's not something I need. Uh, so anyhow, there is that. Um, the, uh, I think that's about all we need to take care of on that. 30 years ago, I, uh, I was at Mile High Outfitters out of Chalice, Idaho. Now that was, they were owned by somebody different. They're still in operation today, but somebody different owns them. Um, so I was up there and I was working for the summer and, and in return for the work that I was doing, um, they were teaching packing. There were three of us that were up there learning it. Um, and, uh, there was myself and there were two other guys that were younger than I was. I was probably 26, 27. I think these guys were like 18, 19 years old. I remember them well. I, I can picture them. Um, one of them's name was Israel. We called him Izzy. I don't remember the other young man's name. They were good kids. Very, um, very hard worker, very conscientious, easy to get along with, very affable fellas. Uh, they had come out together. And, uh, so what we were basically doing was we were going up, we were staying at the base camps and then we were cutting firewood at the base camp and then going up to different spike camps, the camps that the small camps, you would go up further on the mountain to hunt for those of you who are not familiar with the life. And, uh, so we were cutting and stacking and splitting and getting firewood ready for the winter hunts. Now this being wilderness area, you're not allowed chainsaws. You're not allowed anything with wheels. You're not allowed anything with motors. And so it was all done uh, with crosscut saws and axes. So me and these two guys, one day we left the base camp and went down the river, uh, Frank Church River of No Return, and picked up another trail and went back up on a mountain up there. And we found a spike camp. They had sent us up there. And so we were supposed to spend the day putting the corral back up for the livestock whenever they bring in the horses and mules and splitting and stacking firewood. So we spent, we spent the day doing that and it got up in the afternoon and, uh, we got done and I said, all right, let's, let's head on back to camp. And so one of the boys said, we want to explore that trail right there. We want to see where that trail goes. And I said, it's, it's after, it's up in the afternoon. It's well after lunch. 
Um, and uh, you're gonna have a hard time getting back before dark if you do that. And if you look right now, there's a big old thunderstorm gathering up behind the peak of that mountain that you're fixing to head up. And they said, well, but we wanna, we wanna check out that trail. I said, okay, all right. Well, it's my turn to cook and I'm making biscuits tonight. So if you guys make it back in time, uh, there you go. So I saddle up my horse and headed down off the mountain. They saddle up their horses and headed up the mountain. Now I was riding a shorter stocky black horse that was actually a BLM Mustang. And just as a side note, I've never ridden a bad Mustang. I've ridden a number of Mustangs and I've never ridden a bad one. I've ridden some bad other horses, uh, some horses that just had no sense. Um, they had no brains, could not pick their way through a, a deadfall or, or a pasture with a rock in the middle of it, but I've never ridden a bad Mustang. So I was riding this Mustang. So we started our switchbacks down and that storm hit me. I've talked about that storm before. So I stepped down, stepped in the, behind a great big spruce tree and pulled his head in uh, and that storm blew through and it just, it just took a minute. It didn't take long. And it blew through and when it was gone, I stepped up and continued on down the mountain. And I got down to the river, and turned left, went up the river and got back to camp. And uh, so I unsaddled and took care of my horse and turned him out and, uh, and went in. The, we were living in the canvas wall tents back up in there. So I went in there. I waited around for a minute. The boys didn't show up, so I started cooking supper. So I made supper, and I made a big old batch of biscuits. Well, when supper was ready for them, the boys hadn't showed up. And uh, so I waited for them like one hog waits for another. I didn't wait for them at all. I sat down and enjoyed my hot supper with my fresh hot biscuits. Uh, supper ended, and they hadn't shown up yet. So I got up and cleaned up from supper, and washed everything, put everything away, and and went over to my cot and my bunk over there and stretched out on it and started reading for a while. I don't remember what I was reading, probably a Louis L'Amour book. Uh, got tired of reading and put the book down and got down in my sleeping bag and pulled it up around me and went to sleep. Now, I don't know if it's a combination. It's, I'm sure it's a combination of the high mountain air and lots of hard physical work and uh, youth and a clear conscience, but I slept really good back in those days. And uh, so I woke up about daylight, poked my head on my sleeping bag and looked across the tent over there and them boys were in their bags. They'd come in sometime in the night. And so I was, I was a little relieved for that. So I just, we didn't have anything to do that day. So I dozed back off and eventually we got up and started stirring around and, um, the, uh, but they had to go back out. They had got caught in that storm and in dark found them. And uh, they found their way roughly in their direction of back home, but they got in a big old thicket and down there somewhere where they couldn't move and the horses couldn't move and they couldn't go any further and they couldn't find their way. They couldn't. So they stepped down and pulled the saddles from their horses and, and stashed them there in that thicket and uh, pulled the bridles and everything and walked off and left the horses and uh, walked and stumbled in and found their way eventually, found their way back to camp. Now, for those of you who are who have no experience, you, you might immediately be saying, well, that was terrible. I can't believe those. No, that was actually a very, that was a very savvy thing to do. That was a very smart, very smart thing to do. Because without the riders and without the saddles, the horses have much better eyesight at night than we do. And they knew where they were the whole time. They have built-in compasses inside. So without saddles and without riders to hinder them, by the time we came out the next morning, the horses, they were there with the other horses. They, they had just come on in. So the boys ate breakfast, and then they had to catch up a couple of horses put bridles on them and get on them bareback and follow the tracks and go back and find where they'd stashed them saddles, get the saddles, put the saddles on the horse and then ride the horses back to camp. Now, why do I tell you all this? 
a good time was had by all. Okay? Um, but I watch folks these days, and there are some of you jack wagons out there that would have got thoroughly offended. You would have been obnoxious. You would have been upset. Why? Because you would have suggested, fellas, if you don't come on back to camp now, you're going to get caught in the dark. You're going to get caught in the rain. Something bad's going to happen. And so you would have been just all kinds of, I told you so. Uh, and you would have taken it personal because they decided to make their own choices. Now, at 19 years old, 18 years old, 19 years old, you leave Ohio and come out there for adventure. That's what you're there for, okay? And so they were there for adventure, and they found adventure, all right? And what was my part in all this? I was a bemused bystander, all right? I got home before dark. I had a good hot supper with all the homemade biscuits I want to eat because there wasn't nobody there um, to uh, in competition for them. And I slept in my bed nice and warm and cozy. Uh, and I didn't have to go out the next morning, dig through a thicket and find my saddle. So it didn't affect me at all. It didn't, it didn't hurt me at all. Okay. Um, I don't know why we can't just live our life and let people live their life without taking it personal and getting righteously indignant when we offer some advice or point something out and they don't listen to us and they decide to do their own thing and then we take it all personal and we keep ourselves all stirred up. We keep ourselves all fired up. Look, and if you... If you're a teacher or you're a pastor or a preacher or something, uh, listen to what I'm fixing to say, okay? Um, sometimes we're just the postman, all right? Now, if I'm the postman and you have an electric bill, my job is to come and give you your electric bill. That's it. That's the full extent of my responsibility, all right? I am not to come back and knock on your door a week later and say, hey, did you pay your electric bill? The electric company's not going to contract me to come and break your kneecaps because you didn't pay your electric bill. The court system is not going to send me out there to climb a pole to flip a switch to turn your electricity off if you don't pay your electric bill. Not my problem. None of my business. Now, what is my problem is if I have the job of bringing you your electric bill and I don't do it, and I do, like you see on the news, some of these guys, they'll just take a whole bag of the mail they're supposed to deliver and dump it off in a dumpster somewhere because they don't want to do it. Now I'm in trouble. But if I give you your electric bill, the monkey's not on my back. It ain't my problem. Sometimes all I'm supposed to do is say, hey, there's this right here. Now, two or three weeks ago, we had a class here when the school was still going on. Good folks. Everybody was good folks. Okay. But we come out the first morning that we were going to go up on the mountain and ride. We come out and dang if everybody didn't have spurs on. I never seen so many spurs in my life. And, uh, and so I thought, well, this might get interesting. So then I was the postman. I called him in and I said, look, We've talked about spurs this week. Spurs have a purpose. They're for communication. They're not for jobbing and poking your horse. They're not for jabbing him to make him go faster. All right? And uh, like the one guy says, wearing spurs is like carrying a concealed weapon. You can have it on you, but you don't have to pull it out and use it all the time. Okay? I said, so um, it just... Be circumspect, all right? You can wear them, but you don't have to use them. Well, we got out there. So that was the postman. I handed them the electric bill. I said, this is what is. Now you do what you do about it. But we got out there, and we had a couple of kayaks out there. I mean, it was, and it was, one of them was a horse that, like, man, we never, ever have any trouble with that horse. But that's why usually I ride in the back. Mama leads the rides, and I ride in the back so I can just watch everybody. 
And then I saw, I'm like, oh, I think I know what's happening here. And we went on again and the horse kind of jumped again and I stopped. And there was another horse. He was like really nervous and really just around. And I stopped. I said, all right, spurs off. Put them in your saddlebags. Uh, you don't mean to, but you're not paying attention to what you're doing. And, you got, and you're making these horses nervous. So the spurs have to come off. Now, the first time around, I was a policeman. I mean, I was a postman. I just give you the news. The second time around, I was a policeman. All right. I was in a position of responsibility and authority. And it was not a case of just giving information. It was a chase of, it was a, a point of changing behavior. Okay. Because I was in the position. That's what I needed to do. And so I did it. All right. So I think a, a lot of times what we need to do is we need to stop. Now, you see somebody doing something or about to do something, uh, so stop and ask yourself, am I a policeman? Am I a postman? Or am I just an amused observer? And if you get that figured out, do I get to just sit here and watch the show? Do I need to quietly say, hey, this is what's going to happen. You know, if you ride much, trail riding with other people, pleasure riding on trail riding, and you get much experience, you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of stuff. All right. And so it gets hard. And, and, and it's a question I have students, they come in and ask, ask, they'll ask me, it's like, should I say something? That's a good question. Um, if I'm on a trail ride and I see somebody that has their back cinch hanging that far down below the horse's belly, which is dangerous, uh, and, uh, should not be, should I say something at that point? Should I be the postman? You're going to have electric bill come due. Should I be the policeman? Get down and tighten up that cinch before you get yourself hurt. Or should I just be an amused observer and watch the show? And that's hard to tell because some of that depends on you. There are situations in life where you will have the responsibility and authority to step up and say, no, we're not doing that. And I won't have that. I could be right there with you, but it's not my place. And I don't have the authority or the position to step up and be the policeman. Okay. Um, there are situations where you know they're not going to listen and they're going to get offended. Then don't put yourself through it. You say, what if they get hurt? Then they get hurt. I've told the story before. Several years ago, my boys were going on a ride and uh, it was uh, it was a big ride. And we met at the straw boss's house about eight o'clock that morning. And uh, we were all saddling up. And getting ready to leave. My boys were kind of small at that time. They had their own horses. I, I, you know, I mean, small. They were 10 or 12 something, I'm guessing. I don't remember. And uh, one, one of the fellows there, and, and I knew him a little bit. And he was, he, was a, he was a pretty good hand. But he had borrowed a two-year-old, very, very, very green broke filly to ride on that ride. And he got on it. And, and that filly was kind of excited. She would, because there was a lot of people, there were a lot of horses, there was a lot of energy, there were dogs, there were, and so she would just kind of, just not, her mind wasn't there. And so he decided to go the route of discipline. So I reached for my boys and said, hey, watch this. We're fixing to have a rodeo. This is going to be a wreck. And uh, sure enough, that mare, she kind of put her head down and, and kind of bogged a bit and said, hey, cowboy, easy up there. Well, again, and I'm not picking on him. I'm not faulting him. We all get in a place where we're not in a place that we ought to be. He made the decision to go the route of discipline, to show her that, hey, I'm the boss, and you're not going to behave like that today. Well, she was a, I believe she, her, the stud, she was out of a Jackie B, if you know your bloodline, she was out of a Jackie B stud out of Kansas uh, and a Poco TV old mare. I knew the mares and I knew the stud. And uh, so she had a bit of a big engine in her. Those Poco TBO mares, they, they come from some high octane stock. 
And uh, that Jackie B stud, he put up, they were just some good rangy, good size, good size colts. And so she had the physical ability to do what she said she was going to do. And so she'd had enough of that. And she said, all right, cowboy. And she put her head down and went to work. And, uh, uh, he wound up on the ground and she stepped in the middle of him. And, uh, um, so what'd y'all do? Well, we helped him in the house. And then we, I think somebody called an ambulance. He wound up, he had some, I don't know if he called an ambulance or not. It seemed like I heard that. He, he had some cracked or busted ribs, which ain't nothing nobody can do for. We've all had that. And, uh, and we were off and left him. So it wasn't my place to tell this experienced cowboy, hey, you get hard on that mare and she may take exception to that. It wasn't my place to say, hey, get off my mare. You're not treating her that way. But I did enjoy the show. All right. So a lot of things in life are going to be more peaceful for you. If you can stop and ask yourself, postman, policeman, or bemused observer. And when you start getting those right, you start getting a lot of other stuff right too. Okay. Anyhow, hope that helps you. I'm going to be here for, I think, I'm probably going to pull out of here Sunday morning to head to Idaho. He should be back out of the mountain by then. It's just like a, a day's drive over there. So I'm going to, I'll do another I plan on doing another couple of videos this week. I shouldn't say this because every time I say what I plan to video in advance, it never happens. But I'm going to try to do a couple of videos on gear this week. Uh, on Do one on tack, uh, one I'm taking up, uh, packing. I, I realize some of you have got, probably have hunting, um, maybe a guided hunt coming up. You've never really been on one and, and you're not sure what to take and how to pack and what to do. So I'm going to try to do a couple of videos this week on that. All right. So I, I hope you'll, I hope you'll step back in. Uh, I appreciate everybody's uh, support and encouragement. And, and uh, so I just, I wish you all a good one and uh, be logical, be reasonable, be safe. And enjoy the show. We'll catch you guys next time.